Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. We've come now to day 225, Numbers chapter 28. Let's pray and ask the Lord's help before we dig into his word together. Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for another opportunity to be in your word. Thank you for this book of Numbers and what you've been teaching us as we've journeyed through this book together. We pray that you would teach us today from Numbers 28. Write your word on our hearts. Your, your word alone is the words of eternal life and gives life to those who hear. So give us ears to hear and hearts to receive what you would speak to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Numbers 28. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the people of Israel and say to them, My offering, my food for my food offerings, my pleasing aroma, you shall be careful to offer to me at its appointed time. And you shall say to them, This is the food offering that you shall offer to the Lord. Two male lambs, a year old without blemish, day by day, as a regular offering. The one lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer at twilight. Also a tenth of an ephah of fine flour for a grain offering, mixed with a quarter of a hin of beaten oil. It is a regular burnt offering which was ordained at Mount Sinai for a pleasing aroma, a food offering to the Lord. Its drink offering shall be a quarter of a hen for each lamb. In the holy place you shall pour out a drink offering of strong drink to the Lord. The other lamb you shall offer at twilight. Like the grain offering of the morning and like its drink offering, you shall offer it as a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. On the Sabbath day, Two male lambs, a year old, without blemish, and two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour for a grain offering mixed with oil and its drink offering. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath besides the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. At the beginning of your months, you shall offer a burnt offering to the Lord. Two bulls from the herd, one ram, seven male lambs, a year old, without blemish, also three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour for a grain offering mixed with oil for each bull, and two-tenths of fine flour for a grain offering mixed with oil, one for the one ram, and a tenth of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering for every lamb, for a burnt offering with a pleasing aroma, a food offering to the Lord. Their drink offerings shall be half a hin of wine for a bull, a third of a hen for a ram, and a quarter of a hen for a lamb. This is the burnt offering of each month throughout the months of the year. Also, one male goat for a sin offering to the Lord. It shall be offered beside the regular burnt offerings and its drink offering. On the fourteenth day of the month is the Lord's Passover, and on the fifteenth day... The fourteenth day of the first month is the Lord's Passover, and on the fifteenth day of this month is a feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. On the first day there is a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work, but offer a food offering, a burnt offering to the Lord, two bulls from the herd, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old. See that they are without blemish. Also their grain offering of fine flour mixed with oil, Three-tenths of an ephah shall you offer for a bull, and two-tenths for a ram. A tenth shall you offer for each of the seven lambs, also one male goat for a sin offering to make atonement for you. You shall offer these besides the burnt offering of the morning, which is for a regular burnt offering. In the same way, you shall offer daily for seven days the food of a food offering, with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. It shall be offered besides the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. And on the seventh day, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work. On the day of the first fruits, when you offer a grain offering of new grain to the Lord at your feast of weeks, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work, but offer a burnt offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Two bulls from the herd, one ram, seven male lambs a year old, 
Also their grain offering of fine flour mixed with oil, three tenths of an ephah for each bull, two tenths for one ram, a tenth for each of the seven lambs, with one male goat to make atonement for you. Besides the regular burnt offering and its grain offering, you shall offer them and their drink offering. See that they are without blemish. And that is the end of Numbers 28. Now you can see on the screen we're going to continue when we get to Numbers 29, which is going to be in two days' time. Tomorrow we're in Ephesians 6, and then we'll come back to Numbers 29 after that, uh, that we're going to continue with these feasts that go throughout the, the year. What is happening here in Numbers 28? So Moses uh, is coming to the end of his ministry. He's already uh, chosen uh, Joshua. God's already anointed him to take over the leadership. And so there's, there's a re-emphasis of some important things that need to be remembered and that need to be practiced by the people after Moses leaves. And what's given here in 20, 28 and 29 is the calendar, the sacrificial calendar. There were day-by-day -day sacrifices. There were week-by-week -week sacrifices. There were month-by-month -month sacrifices. And then there were three annual festivals, Passover, the Feast of Weeks, and then the Feast of, of Tabernacles. And so the Feast of Weeks also known as the First Fruits and the tabernacles, also known as convocations or, or the ingathering. And so <clears throat> these are critically important to the life of Israel under the law of Moses. It was very important that Israel would see every morning and every evening that they belonged to the Lord, that they needed the Lord, and that they had sinned against the Lord, and that offering was required for their sin. This was also required month by month in a special way. So morning and evening, morning and evening, but then also month by month, according to the lunar calendar in a special way, but week by week uh, on the Sabbath day, month by month at the beginning. And so God wanted his people worshiping in this regular way so as to, to keep an awareness that every day, every week, every month, and every major season, that's kind of what's a little bit behind the three festivals. There's other, other things behind it too. But every day, every week, every month, and every major season, they are the Lord's holy people. They belong to the Lord, and they need the Lord, and they've sinned against the Lord, so they need atonement, but also they're being fed by the Lord. So that's all of these offerings are both sin offerings to, to, to provide atonement and, and sacrifice for sin, but also food offerings, which are to feed uh, the, the holy people, the priests in particular. So this is the regular pattern. Now, a question arises, like, what do we do with this as believers? And there are basically two things that people have done in response to these kinds of passages and the way that Paul addresses them in the New Testament. There's basically two reactions that are both inappropriate for us who are living in the age of fulfillment because the mosaic law especially in its ceremonial aspects it is a shadow is a type is a foreshadowing is a promise is an anticipation of what is coming in christ what is fulfilled in christ on the cross and then what is given to us in the church as as been fulfilled in christ as having been fulfilled in Christ. So the question becomes, how do we live this? And if you go to the Apostle Paul, you get some guidance. Uh, for example, here's Gal uh, Colossians chapter 2, starting in verse 16. Paul says, therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come but the substance belongs to Christ. So here we have in Colossians 2, 16 and 17, this idea that you shouldn't have judgment passed on you in questions of food and drink, that's the dietary laws, or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. So these are, right out of Numbers 28 and 29, these regular observances the festivals are the three times a year, every season, 
the new moon is the once a month and the Sabbath is the once a week. So what Paul is, is saying here is, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, who are living in the age of fulfillment, we are no longer to keep or to pass judgment on one another regarding these ceremonial matters or regarding these mosaic worship matters, matters of food and drink, festivals, new moons, Sabbaths. And verse 17 could not be any clearer. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Now, some people, because they came from a culturally Jewish background and had important uh, family connections and community obligations, they, they kept doing these things, and that's okay. That part was okay for certain reasons, but there's you can't pass judgment on one another. In other words, you cannot give over to uh, the idea that this is what makes you spiritual. This is what makes you better before God. Um, and he continues this in verse 20. If with Christ you have died to the elemental spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Referring to things that all perish as they are used. So all of these restrictions are inappropriate for those who are in Christ. And let's get another passage because you could take one passage and misunderstand it. But here's another one, Galatians 4. Paul says, I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to those things that by nature are not God's. But now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world, whose slaves you want to become once more? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid I may have labored over you in vain. So this is Galatians 4, 1 through 11. And here, instead of the imagery of shadow and substance, we have the Im imagery of immaturity versus maturity. In the childhood, a child is no different from a slave, even though he may be an heir. But the childhood in Galatians, and you have to study Galatians in its context to get this clearly, the childhood refers to the time of being under the law. And the law was our disciplinarian to bring us to Christ, our escort, our, our juvenile delinquency officer, our, our, our leader to bring us to Christ. That's all. This is word pe uh, pedagogos in Galatians 3 that can be translated a bunch of different ways. That's why I was saying all those different things. But that's in Galatians 3. The law's job is to keep us under control and bring us to Christ. Well, now we've come to Christ. Now we've been redeemed from being under the law. We've received adoption as sons. And one mark of that is that we are to no longer observe days and months and seasons and years. And if we do go back to observing days and months and seasons and years, Paul says, I'm afraid that I may have labored over you in vain. So that's one negative reaction or bad reaction to things like Numbers 28 and 29 is for us as Christians to say, well, we should be observing these things. We should be keeping all of these days and weeks and months and festivals and years and etc. right? Well, no, we can't do that because the substance has come in Christ. But another overreaction in the other direction is to say, well, then the whole concept of a Sabbath is to be thrown out because we're no longer under the law, but we're in Christ. But there is a Sabbath principle 
that predates the Mosaic law, and that is a creationally rooted principle. It's not a Mosaic law ceremonial idea. The idea of these sacrifices and these ceremonies are, but in creation itself, God rested on the Sabbath day and declared it holy, and the Sabbath is part of the Ten Commandments, which is the moral law of God, not the ceremonial law, and God roots that in creation. So the Sabbath principle that we rest one day in seven and that we have a day of worship and rest one day in seven is a creational ordinance that is part of the moral law of God. It's how we honor God and also how we bless our neighbors by giving them rest. That is not to be thrown out. And so some people get confused because in, in these places, Paul talks about Sabbaths, right? Um, he says, let no one pass judgment with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. And here he says, you know, you observe days and months and seasons and years. And some people say, well, Sabbath would be part of that as well. But Paul in both of those passages is clearly talking about the ceremonial law, the Mosaic law of ceremony and ritual and cleanliness and holiness, all of which are fulfilled in Christ. Now, what do we mean by fulfilled in Christ? Christ is the one who makes us holy. Christ is the one who brings us near to God and is our once for all sacrifice that cleanses us of all sin and, and gives us access to God. And Christ is also the spiritual nourishment for our souls that is prefigured in the, the food aspect of these offerings. So both the atonement aspect of the offering and the food aspect of the offering are fulfilled in Christ. Christ is our atonement for sin and he's the food for our hungry souls. So we have everything fulfilled in Christ. The way we keep these then properly is that morning and evening, week by week, month by month, year by year, we remember, we observe, we seek the Lord through Jesus Christ. And so I do think it's a good pattern for life that in the morning when I rise and in the evening when I'm getting ready for bed, I turn to the Lord, I read his word, I pray, I seek his face. Week by week, on the Lord's Day, which is the Christian Sabbath, the first day of the week, the day of resurrection, gather together with God's people and observe that. And then we do have certain times during the year when these aren't necessarily biblically commanded, but you know, we have Christmas where we remember the birth of Christ, we have Easter, we remember the resurrection of Christ. And so these kinds of annual things, not necessarily the full church calendar, because I think that can become a whole new ceremonial law in and of itself, but you can have annual things where you remind yourself about the truth that is fulfilled in Christ and that we live out as those who belong to him. So Christ is the fulfillment of the law for everyone who believes. We no longer go back to the shadows and types, but we walk in the law as it is fulfilled in Christ, who makes us holy and who feeds us with himself. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. Thank you for the gift of life that we get to enjoy day by day and week by week, month by month and year by year. Our life is given to us by you and we belong to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Help us to walk in faith. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, tomorrow, as I said earlier, we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 6. So join us for that. Have a blessed day in the Lord.